Welcome everybody to the Entrepreneurial CPA Show. We're here to take a deep dive in the knowledge needed to break through the box and punch above your weight. I'm Garrett Wagner, your Entrepreneurial CPA Channel host, and we're back with one of our favorite, most popular episodes, Tired of Taxes. Again, brought to you by the National Association of Certified Valuators and Analysts, NACVA for short, because it's a mouthful. For the past 30 years, They've helped thousands of CPAs establish their authority in matters of value and become today's financial super consultants. Well, today on this special show, we're gonna ask that question once again. Are you tired of taxes? Because we know you are. So we're gonna dive into business valuation, the CVA credential. We've got our special guest today, come on out of Illinois, Josh Horn of Horn CPA. Josh, how's it going today? Good, how are you, Garrett? Thank you. Not too bad. Excited to be here. And Josh, I'd love to hear a little more about, you know, I always love talking to any CVA members. You guys really have a great grasp on what's important. I'd love to hear kind of like, what's your career evolved into today? No longer taxes. What do you do with your time? I primarily help business owners that want to uh, sell out of their businesses through the exit planning process, or in some cases, those that want to buy out their typically older owners. So I do a lot in the, in the M&A and exit planning space. And I also help litigation and divorce attorneys with business valuation as, as well as some of the other financial matters in those um, sticky situations. Yeah, we see that a lot from, from our NACVA guests, those kind of like, you know, litigation support, buying, selling. Are you seeing a lot of activity recently in the, in the M&A side given generational changes and, and COVID as well this year? Yeah, there, there is, believe it or not, I mean, certainly some businesses have been impacted negatively. There's, there's definitely some, some action with those that have seen a bounce um, in terms of that maybe the demand has actually popped up because their business is, is, is well positioned um, in COVID. Um, and, and then there's also this, this part of, of COVID that sort of set in and caused some fatigue to some, I think it's provided that extra push and motivation to go, okay, now I want to go look at how I can, I can sell my interest because I'm just, this is, this has really been a body blow and, and I'm tired. So there's been that too. Yeah. It's, it's such an interesting piece. Once you get into what's a business worth, you're no longer looking at the past. We talk about you looking at the future and you made a great comment as we were chit-chatting before the show on you know, the complexity of it all, it's like a box of Legos on the floor and you've got to build something. So how did you learn, how do you learn the skills you needed to, to build Lego boxes out of evaluation of a business from just the, the complex records we all know we get from our clients? Sometimes they're pretty, sometimes they're not. Yeah, interestingly enough, I mean, going back to the tax world, I, that was a big help to me because definitely we we definitely in the tax world we live with sometimes some less than ideal records. We're not necessarily everything is all buttoned up when we when we get it. Um, I'm I'm out of that now, but those skills that I learned during my tax days, I call them my my cardboard box um, skills, uh, allow me to to do a lot of the valuation work that I do now because uh, books and records and, and bookkeeping still is a, is a challenge in the valuation world sometimes. Did the NACVA help you kind of in those different problem solving analytical skills to build chaos or build structure out of the chaos? Uh, yeah, I, I, they, they definitely do I mean the trainings? I I mean, I, I think uh, you know I, I guess I, I could say if, if I have a I have a little bit of bias, um, but I think it's it's a bias that that comes from just trying other types of programs. I, I think the NACBA trainings are some of the best, and I've been able to build lifelong friends and call on those that have had similar situations. So the instructors that are teaching the courses they've been in the trenches, they've done what, what I'm doing now, and they've done it for some cases, many more years. So that, that helps to, a lot of the, of, of the advantage of, of going through an ACVA training is, it, are the stories, um, you know, the, okay, this is a situation I faced, and this is how I dealt with it. And so that helps a great deal to bridge the gap between the theoretical, um, whatever you're looking at, a discounted cash flow or something like that too. Okay, I have a real life situation. How am I going to handle that? 
Yeah, and I'm sure there's that challenge. Each case is unique and different. And it always helps, especially in court, to have something to point back to of like, well, here's how this situation was handled before. So I can see that, it, not just the cases, but like the expertise from others. We hear that all the time. The NACV is great for connecting those peers around the country that really support each other and don't view each other in a competitive headbutting type of way. Yeah, abs absolutely. I mean, I mean, certainly we, we um, you know, we face off against each other in, in court sometimes. That certainly does happen. Um, it, it's, it's interesting that you bring up that, you know, that it is helpful to have a precedent when that precedent is well established and, and, and is something that we believe is, I guess I would say the right path to go down because I, I actually did testify um, not too long ago and I, and I, it, it helped that I had something that another expert had done in court and that particular judge had seen it before. And so that it's, it's an instant credibility builder. It's like, okay, I'm not coming up with a new theory here in, in this particular case. I'm coming with something that has been in front of you before and I did it this way. And in this case, I had to tweak it a little bit because of the facts and circumstances of the case, but it certainly did help that another CPA had been in there and done similar work for that judge. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the best thing in court, having that precedence to kind of point back to. Mm -hmm. And then Josh, I know the other thing we were talking about beforehand, and we see this all the time, we talk about this in other shows that we do, all of our clients that want to sell their business, what they really need to do is, is make it look like a business someone wants to buy. And you yes. hit the nail on the head perfectly on, if that business can start to track you know, metrics and KPIs and reporting, that makes them so much more attractive to the buyer than the, sh the big boxes full of poor paper records. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it does. Yeah, it, it definitely. Which dog is barking? Yours or mine? I think this is mine. The guy's here to move the lawn. I was trying to, I was trying to mute it. I think I might have muted you. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So what we're, I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. No worries. We're kind of talking about, you know, the, the, the KPIs that make you more. Yeah. Business than, yeah, definitely. You know. I mean, it, it, okay. I'm, I'm unmuting. Am I not supposed to do that? I'm no, sorry. No, I, I it's muted. coming up. Mine's keeps muting you instead of me. I don't know why. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I, I think definitely somebody that's coming in with an outside perspective and they see that the business is being run uh, and honestly, like a top nut notch private company should be or even a public company would be with those targets that you're aiming at each week. And, and your you know, whatever it is, it depends on the industry what you're what you're aiming at. And I've actually helped a couple of businesses come up with those KPIs, and it, it definitely is a huge credibility builder to a to a buyer uh, to see that you're running it, you know, as as a professional business as opposed to kind of back of the napkin and just sort of winging it. Yeah. So, Josh, the most important question then, getting back to you personally, what was your tipping point to go from? traditional CPA work to embracing all things of value? You know, I, I, it was, it was, it was really I, that, that, that very first certification training within a CVA. I think that really just sparked a fire in me. And I started to look at everything a lot differently, including uh, the actual CPA firm that I worked for at the time. So I started to look at everything through a value lens. And to, to simplify it and break it down, as, as one of the, the, the fellows that teaches for NACVA says, you know, if you, if you, if you can deter, estimate an income stream or benefit stream and you can estimate the risk rate, you can value anything. And there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, we can even value our own abilities. We can value a lot of different things in this world if you can estimate the benefit stream and estimate the risk rate. So once you start to kind of think that mindset, you think, okay, how can I build myself and my skill set into the best, you know, best contributor in, in the things that I do? Uh, and how can I add the most value for the, for the business owner clients? And, and certainly there is a lot of value to be added in doing tax work. I'd kind of reached that point where I felt like I'd kind of maxed out in terms of what I could do as a tax person. 
And I thought, okay, let's let's take this to the next level in terms of to a lot of the things that we learn in NACVA. Yeah, and that's why now's a great time for everybody out there in the profession to say, you know what, I'm feeling that. I'm at that tipping point. I don't feel like I'm adding tremendous value. I'm feeling just beaten down by doing taxes, but I want to do something that's still related. I don't want to do a complete job change. Yeah. I want to add yeah. more value to the clients that I work with. Yeah, that that you 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 nailed it. And w- without a doubt, I mean that toolkit gained from years in the trenches of doing tax work is something I rely on every day. Um, without a doubt. And, and it definitely built a solid foundation to look on. Um, it, it, it's in, in my particular experience, it, it became very, very difficult to try to build a valuation practice in a seasonal tax practice. And there's, and I reached that point at which just, you know, culturally some firms are comfortable having people do taxes and valuations and even audits all in the same firm. I found that to be very difficult to do. Um, and I, I found that balance very tricky. Um, it is. It, and I've seen that sometimes I've seen firms that just have like, well, Josh is inside the firm and Josh does just valuations. He doesn't touch those other things. Um, yeah. so like, yeah, it's, it's tough to balance your life wearing multiple hats like that throughout the year. Yeah. There's, there's, there's the risk, uh, component. I would say, you know, you're, you're, I think the risk to your practice is higher if you're trying to do all those things, juggle all those things. I think there's the issue of, of just kind of your overall sanity. Um, and, and I also think the other challenge you run into, and I hear this a lot from those that try to sort of have feet in both camps, so to speak, is, you know, attorneys don't care if you're in tax season. They, you know, they need you now. And so invariably a project will come along and it's March. And so if you're trying to do tax work and you have, you, I mean, you're going to have to turn away a lot of projects. That's going to be one of the challenges. And those projects can be certainly a lot more rewarding as well as, as profitable. Uh, they can be, um, certainly. So that, that was my experience. I mean, I, I have seen it work. The CPA firm has to be willing to support the practitioner to do things differently than in a traditional CPA firm. So if they're, if they're relying always on, you're hitting your billable hour target every week, they may be disappointed as you're trying to build it. Yeah, because your cycle is not like ours. It's completely different. And there's just no overlap. Yeah. You've got to manage it completely differently. Once again, yeah. focus on what adds value in that business, not the wrong metrics. Mm-hmm. So perfect, Josh. We're almost out of time here. Any final thoughts before we, we wrap up today's episode? I would just say that that if if someone is interested in getting into this, feel free to reach out to me. I am an open book, as I like to say often on social media and different places. I I share tons of of content and things that that um, have helped me as well as the mistakes I've made too. So uh, I, you know, a lot of the the discussions I have with with colleagues around the country are okay. How can we do this better? How can we learn how to make this easier? And so if there's anybody that's looking to get into this. Uh, feel free to reach out to me because I've 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 uh, I've made a lot of the errors <laughs> along the way to get yeah. to this point. Well, final 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 question for you, Josh. What's the dog's name? Cosmo. Cosmo. I see him in the yeah. background. I see him in the background. Well, Josh. Yeah, please. he's he's getting antsy. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Hopefully, Thank you. if you're feeling tired of taxes ready to get out of the grind, join the thousands of CPAs who specialize in business valuation. Transform your financial consulting career with the most widely recognized business valuation credential, the Certified Valuation Analyst. To learn more, click the link below, visit the NACVA website and get started today. Don't suffer through another tax season just to do it again like Groundhog Day. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching our latest video. Now, if you're ready to become the professional of the future, click the link, start today, evolve now.